So we're looking tonight at um, finding satisfaction, finding satisfaction. That'll be our, our lesson for tonight. How do we find satisfaction? Uh, where do we find satisfaction? Especially, you know, we live in a, in a culture that actually craves a satisfaction, uh, but never find it, you know. Uh, even when, when we were uh, out in the world, uh, you can, and some of you might act like you don't remember what I'm talking about, but you know what I'm talking about. When we were out there, we were, that's what we were seeking, satisfaction. We, were, we, 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 we ran, ran with, the, with the rollers and the ballers, and we tried to, you know, uh, it was a, a futile attempt at satisfaction because um, our culture craves it but never finds it. And um, even the rich and famous can't find satisfaction because what? They're, they're trying to find it in all the wrong places. And, and, that, and therein lies the, the main issue. Uh, we, 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 when you try to fulfill um, uh, a need that exists in, in you, um, you find that the only person that can uh, fill that that longing, that need, is God. Uh, I, I put it like this: we have a, we all have a God-shaped void inside of us, and we try to fill this with with all kinds of stuff, with drugs, with alcohol, with uh, with with um, relationships and food and you name it and we're never totally satisfied so uh let's as we delve into this tonight hopefully uh you'll get something from it and um i'm i'm gonna do my best to uh expose as it were the word of god to you and and hopefully you'll find some kind of uh solace and and uh, satisfaction in, in god's word tonight that's my prayer but you know what speaking of prayer uh, I don't know what it is that you're going through tonight, but one thing I do know is that nothing shall be called impossible for our God because our God is able, all right? And and so I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray tonight before we start and um, pray for God's blessing and God's favor to, to be upon our lives. And I don't know what it is that you're going through, but whatever it is, just know that God is able. Nothing is too hard for our God. Amen. So let's look to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy and for your peace. Thank you for your blood that never loses its power. And I pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, for your blessings upon each and every one of us, for your grace, which is sufficient, and for that special need that exists in the lives of your people. Whatever that need is, God, I pray that it'll be fulfilled uh, tonight and that that person that, that has a longing, Lord God, a need, an innate need, Lord, a, a direct need, a, uh, a need, Lord God, an emergency need, whatever it is, I pray that you will grant it. Heal those that needs to be healed. Deliver those that needs to be delivered. Set free those that needs to be set free. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, so finding satisfaction. Matthew 5, verse 6. Uh, jump right into a first question tonight. How does Jesus explain how we find satisfaction in Matthew 5, verse 6? This is what he said. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, so, so far, we've established that to live the blessed life, it requires that we become poor in spirit. We dealt with that. And also that we recognize our spiritual poverty. Next, we must mourn. Blessed are those that mourn. They, sh they shall be comforted. We, what must we mourn over? We must mourn over our sins. All right? mourn over the fact that we are sinful and and we're we're uh uh poverty stricken spiritual poverty and then we must become meek because the word did say 
Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now the meek uh, uh, are, are those who submit to the lordship of, of Jesus. In, in other words, Jesus is Lord of their lives. And in that respect, uh, they are humbled by God. And they're humble because they recognize who their God is and, and in, in, in juxtaposition, with we recognize who we are in relation to God. So we are, we're meek in that respect. And, and, and when we let Jesus be Lord in our lives, as that, that's a meek person. When we allow him to be Lord of our lives, master of our lives, we will naturally, naturally run right into this. We will hunger and we will thirst after righteousness. So you see how they all relate, how they all uh, uh, come together. So now we're at that point where we're hungry and we're thirsty after righteousness. Uh, we, we recognize that we were poor in spirit and we, rec we recognize our spiritual poverty. Then we begin to mourn over our sins. Blessed are they that mourn. Then we become meek based upon the fact that we're, we're, we're poor in spirit and we mourn over it. We become meek. And then in our meekness, we submit to the Lordship of Christ. And when we submit to him, when Jesus is Lord of our lives, then we hunger and we get thirsty after righteousness. And so to do that, to, to hunger and thirst or to have that hunger and that thirst satisfied, we need to do three things. All right. And those of you that have your handouts, you'll, you'll see those things listed there. Uh, by the way, if you need a copy of, of the handout for our, our teaching, uh, just drop me a, a text message and let me know. Put your email address in there and I'll send it to you, all right, in time for our studies. Uh, the number that you text uh, your message to is 954 642 one five one six that's nine five four six four two one five one six send me your email address and i'll make sure it's waiting for you in your inbox uh prior to the the teaching next week all right so to satisfy our thirst and our hunger for righteousness we need to accomplish three things one is we need to cultivate here we go we need to cultivate uh a good spiritual appetite all right now you if you don't have a good appetite in the natural realm you won't eat properly and it's, it's the same thing in the spirit realm we need a spiritual appetite all right we need and how do we cultivate this spiritual appetite the you know hunger and thirst reminds us that eating and and drinking are essential for uh, our healthy physical lives and in the same way righteousness is not optional for being spiritual healthy uh, uh, to hunger and thirst after righteousness simply means that we desire righteousness like a starving person desires food a starving person has a good appetite for good food, all right? So when we hunger and we thirst after righteousness, we have an appetite. Write that down in your notes. We have an appetite for spiritual food. We have an appetite for righteousness, all right? And so because of that, because we have, uh, we're hungering and, and thirsting for righteousness it, you know it, it's more than anything else it, it, it more than anything else is it, having a passionate desire for the things of god and there are a lot of people that go to church there are a lot of people that even call themselves saved and and say that they're christians and they really do not know god they do not hunger hunger after the things of god 
They're not passionate. They don't have a desire for the things of God. And, and we will want to worship him if we have a desire and, and a passion for God's thing, for God's things. We would want to worship him. We'd want to uh, study his word. We'd want to pray, talk to him in prayer, and, and minister to people in his name. Those are the people that hunger and thirst after righteousness. And, you know, it, it's like going to the doctor. You know, when we go to the doctor, one of the first questions the doctor would ask is, how is your appetite? And if we haven't eaten in, in several uh, hours and have no appetite, it means that something is physically wrong. In the same way, if we ought to have, if we don't have any appetite for the things of God, it means that something is spiritually wrong with us. If you don't hunger and thirst after righteousness, it means something is defective. It's like that mother who has a newborn baby. It's natural that that baby desires or hunger, hungers and thirsts after milk. All right? And, and if the baby, if, if the mother gives the baby the milk and the baby refuses the milk or the baby's body uh, refuses the milk, then it doesn't mean that anything's wrong with the milk. Something's wrong with the baby. And in the same manner, if you are a child of God, if you're a servant of God, if you are saved, if you're biblically saved, you will desire the things of God. You'll have an appetite for the things of God. And if you don't have an appetite for the things of God, something is spiritually wrong. All right, watch this. Here we go. If we're spiritually healthy, question number two says, if we're spiritually healthy, we'll have a... Uh, we will have what desire that's found in Psalm 42, verse 1. Psalm 42, verse 1. You know what it says? As the deer pant. And y'all know this one. As the deer pants for the water brook, so panteth my soul after you, O God. Uh, a good spiritual appetite then reveals itself in a craving for what? For the word of God. If you don't have a craving for God's word, it means your appetite has been suppressed. Your spiritual appetite has been suppressed. A hungry person doesn't have to be forced to eat, does he? So why is it that many of us have to be forced to read our Bible, forced to, to, to even listen to a Bible study, not even in church, but a Bible study that is right there in their homes? At least they can access it. A good Bible study. At least they can access it. But if you can't access, if you can't, if you don't have a deep appetite for God's word, if you don't have a spiritual appetite for God's word, it means then that you, something is defective in your life. Are, are you with me? And so, good spiritual appetite. Write this down. Good spiritual appetite reveals itself in, the, in a craving for God's word. All right? And, and given the opportunity, if we're spiritually hungry, we will devour God's word. It, it, it's, it will be like Jeremiah, won't we? Jeremiah says uh, in question three, what did Jeremiah write uh, in Jeremiah 15 verse 16? He says, your words were found and I ate them. This is what Jeremiah says. I ate your word. And, and your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord of hosts. And so to, to cultivate good spiritual appetite, we must avoid eating unhealthy food. Amen? Uh, and what's unhealthy food? Uh, in the spiritual sense, on in a natural sense, unhealthy food is like you know nowadays our kids want uh, uh, frosted flakes and and all those cereals that that's just packed with sugar. That's not healthy food. Uh, they want McDonald's and 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 fast food. That's not healthy food. In the same way, there there are unhealthy spiritual food. Spiritual food that's unhealthy are, are stuff like 
uh, pornography, unhealthy spiritual food, uh, uh, whether it's pornography in movies, whether it's in magazines, whether it's on the internet, uh, it's unhealthy. We also must not water down God's word because when we water down God's word, it removed the spiritual nutrients from God's word. Does that make sense? Our heart's desire must be to obey the word of God. There, there's an old saying uh, uh, about the Bible. It says, this book will keep you from sin, but sin will keep you from this book. All right, here, here's a, a, another question here. And question, uh, we're, we're on number four. And um, let's see, number four. Number four. Okay, hopefully y'all can hear me. Uh, hopefully I'm sounding okay out there. Amen. All, all the folks that join, God bless you. I hope, you, I hope I'm sounding um, okay out there. Okay, so here we go. Here's a question. To cultivate a good spiritual appetite, we must avoid all sin. You know, a lot of people don't like to hear, uh, hear me preach like this, but it's necessary. Then we will have what attitude found in Psalm 119 verse 16. Psalm 119 verse 16 says, I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. So to find satisfaction, we've got to cultivate a good spiritual appetite. All right? And to cultivate a good spiritual appetite, we can't water down God's word. We have to eat good nutritional spiritual food. And we went into that. But here's another thing. To find this kind of satisfaction that the Bible is referring to, the second item is to investigate the meaning of righteousness. Investigate the meaning of righteousness. Now, yeah, we're getting deep. We're getting deep, but just hang in there with me. You know, a lot of people don't like to talk about these things, but, but someone's got to tell you, all right? The word righteousness in Matthew 5, verse 6 uh, let me tell you what it doesn't mean. It, it does not refer to what's called in, in, uh, in biblical studies uh, imputed righteousness. Uh, it, it's not referring, in other words, it's not re uh, referring to salvation by, by justification, you know, where God does justify. And, and, and the bottom line is it's not referring to being saved. All right. That's the easiest and simplest way of putting it. What it refers to, this kind of righteousness. And it's, it's so important that you know this when when you're doing a, a, a biblical study. When you're studying uh, God's word like we are right now, it is important that we uh, understand the meaning of certain words, because certain words will have one meaning at one place and another meaning somewhere else. Uh, because in, in, the, in the Hebrew or the um, Aramaic uh, language or Aramaic tongue or the, uh, the Greek, which is the New Testament, uh, they have more than one word for, uh, for, the in, for its English counterpart. In, in other words, uh, the word uh, love, for example, that's a good one. Love. Love for us is love. Love, for, love in the Greek is 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 uh is agape eros f filio and um and so there are very various meanings to the one word now righteousness in this respect uh or, or biblically can mean imputed righteousness or righteousness that's given to you when you're saved in, in other words you did nothing to earn salvation did you no god imputed God uh, for want of a better phrase or better word God put righteousness in you you didn't earn it you, you you weren't born with it you didn't develop it over time 
but God made you righteous. And that's, quote, that's where the word justification ca uh, came from. You're justified before God, not because of anything good that you did, but you're justified before God because of his grace. In other words, you're justified before God because he likes you. Not because of anything that you did. God likes us. And in the Bible says in that while we were yet sinners in due time, Christ died for us. That's grace. That's justification. He made us righteous. Amen. It's like getting a speeding ticket. Uh, any of you ever gotten a speeding ticket before? When, when you get a speeding ticket, uh, there's a loophole in the law where you can uh, not pay the ticket, but go to court and and you can throw yourself at the mercy of the judge and and say judge i'm not going to plead guilty even though i am nor am i going to plead innocent cuz i'm not but i'm going to throw myself at your mercy judge and i'm going to plead what they call in legal terms no contest meaning i'm not admitting to guilt or innocence and so you throw yourself at the mercy of the, of the judge and the judge will say, okay, uh, you know, I'll give you a break. Just pay the court fee and, and go home. God bless you. It's your first offense, right? But, but what God does is, is similar, but it's different because what God does, he makes us righteous. We stand before him as the ultimate judge and he makes us righteous even though we didn't deserve it, even though we were yet sinners. He made us righteous. That's what justification is. Uh, and so in Matthew 5 verse 6, which, which is what we're dealing with here, uh, he's not talking about righteousness in the, in the sense of the word uh, uh, of salvation. What, it referring, what it's referring to is, is fidelity to God. That's a good way of putting it. What, what this righteousness is referring to is, is really a passionate desire for personal holiness. All right? You're already saved. You, you already have your name written in the Lamb's book of life. You already have a relationship with God. But even though you have your relationship, it's been established that he justified you. There is still a personal innate need, a, a, a drive, a, a, a passion for personal holiness, for living right in the sight of God. And I think it also includes a desire for personal holiness to prevail in the lives of other people. So in other words, you want to be holy because God is holy. You want to be righteous because he's been good to you. You want to live the kind of life that God wants you to live because, amen, he is your God and he's your savior and you want to be obedient to his word. And not just that, you want to see this righteousness, not just in yourself, but in other people as well. So many do not hunger and thirst after this kind of righteousness. Amen. This is a kind of righteousness that Matthew uh, uh, 25 or uh, 5 verse 6 is dealing with. All right. Many don't hunger after that righteousness, personal integrity, just living right in the sight of God, just living right in the sight of other people. That is the kind of righteousness, hunger and thirst after righteousness. They don't want it because they think it takes out the fun and the joy out of life. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. Some of y'all might not want to admit it, but you know it's the truth. All right? And somebody's got to tell you. And maybe it's best that I tell you because, you know, uh, you're not seeing me personally. So it, it might go over a little bit better. You know, Mark Twain once said, uh, having spent considerable time with, with good people, I can understand why Jesus liked it, liked to be with tax collectors and sinners. You know, Mark Mark Twain is a fool. You know, he he's an atheist. He he uh, he doesn't believe in God. So he, he he you know make jokes and fun about God and try to be very facetious and make facetious statements like this. He says, having spent considerable time with good people, I can understand why Jesus liked to be with uh, tax collectors and sinners. Mark Twain's view is, 
is shared, I think, by most of our in our culture. Uh, and that's why a desire for righteousness is on the decline. Listen, we're living in a kind of world, saints, that, oh uh, man, if, if you were paying close attention to what's going on in this life, it would scare you half to death. It would. I, uh, you know, they, in, um, I forgot what state it was. I think it's Alabama. I think it's Alabama. They, they have burnt down at least five churches now. Nobody knows who's doing it, but five established, uh, some of these churches are, 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 are natural, uh, not, not natural, but they're landmarks for, for the, for the state. And someone just goes around burning down these churches. Uh, pastors are sleeping in their churches now because they don't want it to be burned. All right, Chick Fil A. Everyone knows that the 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 owner of the, of the Chick Fil A uh, company is a Christian, and he doesn't uh, he doesn't open his restaurants on on Sundays. None of the franchises are open on Sundays, not even the ones in the airport. And, and what they're doing now is they're, they're, they're uh, using that. People, evil men and women are using that as an excuse to kick Chick-fil-A out of the airports. All right. They're saying, well, if you don't open on Sunday, Sunday is the busiest day and, and one of the busiest days in the airport. So uh, you, we can't have you here. We know it's deeper than that. We know it's a war against Christianity. And, and I'm telling you, this culture, this society that we live in, it, it's, it's getting crazier and crazier and people are just out of their mind. Listen, I've never known, I've always suspected it, but I never knew how idiotic and stupid people really are. Even people that we, that we vote in uh, uh, during election times and send them to, to, to Washington to represent us. They're a bunch of idiots and fools, most of them. Anyway, I'm going off script. Let's continue. So hung, to be hungry and to be thirsty after righteousness, even though it's on the decline, in this society, hunger and thirsting at for righteousness does not mean keeping a lot of laws uh, uh, or, or living by a list of do's and don'ts. All right. Uh, a lot of people don't like to do it because they feel, you know, it's going to take the fun out of life. But but what does it mean? Then? What does it mean to seek righteousness? Now, describing the last judgment, and, and this is in Matthew 25, uh, Jesus said, that he will take those, or, or rather, those people uh, on his right hand, he'll tell them to come and receive their inheritance. Next, he says, he will, uh, uh, next he will say they are receiving their inheritance. Why? Because he was hungry and they fed him. He was thirsty and they gave him something to drink. He needed clothes and they clothed him. He was sick and they visited him and so on and so on. All right, I'm going somewhere. Look at question five now. With that in mind, look at question five. The most important part of, of our Lord's illustration is what he says in the first phrase of Matthew 25, 37. Write it below. This is what he says. Then, watch this now, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you to drink? Now, what's happening is a picture of the kind of righteousness that he's referring to here in our study uh, is coming forth. The righteous, he says, will seek him. All right? And they'll ask him, when did they uh, see the Lord hungry and feed him? Or when, when did they see him thirsty and they gave him something to drink? And it's critical that we understand who Jesus calls righteous. Therein lies the key to our lesson. Watch this now. A righteous person in this respect 
does good things and doesn't even remember why because he or she does them so naturally so this is the other aspect of righteousness that that we're dealing with uh, of course uh it doesn't negate the 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 justification that that jesus affected in our lives that's a kind of righteousness that's necessary for us to move on but this righteousness the righteousness that the personal responsibility to live the kind of life that's pleasing to god is more than just uh uh not stealing and and committing adultery and and, and fornication it's more than that all right it's that and then some it, it, it's a people that have a natural innate desire to do good to other people and not even think about it, not even remember it. Just a naturally nice person to others. They don't go around telling people what they did because they never remember what they did. They, they never want to... Uh, their good deeds to be spotlighted. It, isn't it so different from people that we know today? Not y'all that are listening, but there are a lot of people that I know today that all they want is, is what we call clout. All they want is, is to develop a kind of reputation where people think that they're nice people, where people think that they're good people. And so what they do is they go on, on, on these mediums, these Facebooks, these, these, these uh, Twitter and Instagram, and, and they, they go on there and, and they do uh, uh, some superficial nice things or say some superficial nice things and expect people to be impressed with them. And as far as as far as they're concerned, they're righteous and they're doing stuff. Uh, they're doing the right thing. But but that's not what that's not what true righteousness is. I, I'm telling you the truth that God loves. That what that is really that that's a kind of uh, uh, selfishness. That's a kind of uh, 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 thing where where people desire to draw attention to themselves. All right. And it has nothing to do with doing good. Even the devil does, do, does good things for people. You know that? But he does it with the wrong motive in mind. Oh, Y'all ain't listening to me. All right. Let's move on. So, when we hunger, I hope you're getting this. When we hunger and we thirst after righteousness, we desire more than anything else to be good to be good people and 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 how are we how what does it mean to be a good person it means to be like jesus right jesus is the best example of good that i know to be like jesus we have to allow then the holy ghost the holy spirit as some people call it some people don't like to say holy ghost because it makes them scared they're scared of ghosts <laughs> but it doesn't matter Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter. But we have to allow him to produce in us what's called the fruit of the Spirit. So to be righteous, we need the fruit. To be like Jesus, we have to produce this fruit of the Spirit. All right? Now, this is because the fruit of the Spirit Really, when you think about it, I want you to listen to me very carefully. And you know what the fruit of the Spirit are, right? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All right? And these are just a few. All right? But, but watch this. And the Bible says, against, against us there's no law. Now, I want you to understand, and, and I'm going to pull the scripture up in a minute. So you can see it. But I want you to understand this. When you look at it and, and think about it, I'm going to mention them again. Uh, in, in fact, let me just, let me just go over there because it, it rolls into this question. To hunger and thirst after righteousness is to, be, is to be starving for what nine components of the fruit of the Spirit listed in Galatians 5 verse 22, B and 23, A. All right? The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love joy peace 
long suffering. Think about them as I, as I mentioned them because I, I want to go somewhere with this. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Let me ask you a question. Rhetorical, obviously, because you can't answer me. Do you have all of these? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. What all of these are, when you think about it, it's a resume of Jesus. It's who Jesus is. Think about it. He is love. He is joy. Peace, the Prince of Peace, right? Long suffer. These are all attributes of Jesus. Very patient, long suffering. Kindness, he's kind. Goodness, nobody good like Jesus. Faithfulness, gentle Jesus. Self control. This is a resume of Jesus. So when the Bible says that we need the fruit of the Spirit to function the way God wants us to function, what it's saying is we need to be like Jesus. Because the fruit of the Spirit epitomizes Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit is, are the attributes of Jesus. Does that make sense? And so when you allow the Holy Spirit, when you allow the Holy Ghost to produce the fruit of the Spirit in your life, you will become a righteous person. Does that make sense? You will become a righteous person. And it all begins by becoming more loving. Why did I say that? One of the hardest things for people to do, to fathom, to, to wrap their minds around, is love. The hardest things for people to do today is love. And guess what? Guess which one's listed first? And look at it again. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Love is like uh, 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 the canvas, uh, a painter's canvas. Without the canvas, there is nothing uh, uh, for the painter to, to draw on. There's nothing to which the paint can stick. Oh, Lord. In, in the same way, without love, there is nothing to which the other components of the fruit of spirit of the spirit can stick. Because love is the canvas, a joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. They all stick to love. They all are connected to love. They all function because of love. Isn't that what Jesus said? All the law and all the commandments are hung on this. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy might, and thou shalt love thy, thy neighbor as thyself. Listen, righteousness then simply becomes more and more like Jesus. And that's what it means for us to be righteous. And, and we become more and more like him because the fruit of the Spirit is being produced in our lives. Amen? So what the people of God need to seek more than anything else are the fruit of the Spirit. Because that's how you become like Jesus. Learn them. Look at the ones that you're strong in, the areas you're strong in, and the areas you're weak in. And work on it and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to bear these fruits. And so we first become, love is listed first because we first become more loving. And then the rest will follow naturally. Amen? Does that make sense? The hardest part of this is love. And if we just get over the love hump, everything else will fall in place. Joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, long-suffering, fall in place. 
So where are we now? Let's look at our last point. Hope you're getting something from this tonight. Finding satisfaction requires, let's, let's recap, requires that we cultivate a good spiritual appetite. We talked about that. Secondly, that we investigate the meaning of righteousness. We just did that. And thirdly, we evaluate our lives. Now, I'm going to break, break this down in three parts as well, okay? The evaluation of our lives so, so that we understand it a little bit better. But let me say this. Jesus said that we will be blessed, right, if we hunger and thirst after righteousness. And you understand the kind of righteousness that we're referring to. But he says we'd be blessed if we hunger and thirst after righteousness. Why? Because he says we'll be filled. Now the word translated filled is cortezo. And if you're writing it down, cortezo is spelled C H O R. T-A-Z-O, Cortezo. Now, the reason, the reason uh, or the meaning of this word Cortezo or filled means to be abundantly satisfied, all right? Many people have wrecked their lives uh, with, with personal debt, uh, they, they, they gamble it all away. They, they do drugs and alcohol and sexual immorality and, and all those other things. And so their lives become a mess because they are looking for satisfaction. Like I said, in all the wrong places, they have this God shaped void inside of their soul that only God can fill. And they're trying to fill it with sex and drugs and gambling and alcohol and all those other things that that destroy lives. And many other people look for satisfaction in in, in other areas too, in their professions, in in their possessions, in, in pleasure, and in prosperity. All right? But having lasting satisfaction can only be found in Jesus. You better believe it. And this is because he is the bread of life. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after the bread of life. For they shall be filled. All right. Brings us to this question. Moving right along. What does Jesus promise in John 6 verse 35? Jesus said to them, I am the what? The bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. See, God gives us a physical appetite. Why? Why do we have an appetite for food? We have an appetite for food because we need food to stay alive. So he gives us this appetite so that we can desire food so that we can stay alive. And if we didn't have an appetite, think about it. If you did not have an appetite, you'd be dead already. We would just shrivel up and die. Amen. So put it this way then. Hunger is necessary for life. It's a good way to put it, right? It's like pain. You think pain is a bad thing, but pain is a good thing. Because if you didn't have pain, you wouldn't know that something's wrong with you. If you weren't hungry, you wouldn't know that you need to eat to stay alive, to get nutrients. So, if we're saved and we do not hunger and thirst after righteousness, it means that we're not spiritually healthy. It means that we will shrivel up and die spiritually. Uh, Get this, people. Get this, folks. Some of y'all I know, some of you I don't know, but I want everyone to get this. How do you know, then, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness? How do you know if, 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 if you have that desire for righteousness? How do you know if you have this hunger for righteousness? Here's the three parts I want to break it down into. Three areas to know, to evaluate your life, to evaluate your soul, to evaluate your spirit, to know if you, if you have that appetite for righteousness. Here's it, the first thing, watch this. 
evaluate your schedule. Now, what am I saying? How much time did you have for God during the last year? Or during the last month? Or during the last week? How much time did you have with God? It, it's a shame and it's embarrassing that folks who call themselves Christians don't even read their Bibles. Don't even pray anymore before they go to bed. Don't spend any time with God. Don't even come to church because they have to work. Or they're too tired. They stayed up late Saturday night playing Fortnite or, 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 or something else. And so they're too tired to come to church on Sunday. But evaluate this. How much time have you spent with God just this week, the first three days of the week? Evaluate your schedule. That's what I'm saying. See if you have violated what exhortation in Hebrews uh, 10 verse 5. What does Hebrews 10 verse 5 says? Let me let me let me look at it real quick. Cuz that that's one of them that um Okay. Well, that's loading. I just want to make sure I have this right. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Just load it, load it, load it, load it, load it. Okay, here we go. It says um, in in Hebrews ten verse five, and, and I'm going to read by uh, I'm going to read from from the NIV if y'all don't mind. It says therefore, when Christ came into the world. You know, there's a scripture that says that we shouldn't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. All right, as 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 the 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 manner of some is. Uh, I mentioned earlier how people, some people, they don't even come to church once a week like they should. All right, uh, and so as a result, their 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 connection with God is off. Their 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 walk with God is not is not bright it's not it's not healthy all right because they stay away from god so evaluate your schedule make sure you spend make sure you have time for god all right here's the second thing i want you to note evaluate your finances now before y'all start hanging up on me and 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 tuning me out because when listen i don't know if it happens at your church but at our church, when we talk about money, people just shut down and get quiet. But hang in there with me, all right? Because I, this is important. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will give back to God. There's absolutely no question in my mind. All right? It, it's a part of righteousness. Giving back to God. Giving back to God is not the most important part of the Christian life by any stretch. But Jesus says, look at what he says. He says it is something that we ought to do. Amen. And, and it rolls into this question. How does Jesus say we can evaluate our giving? Look at 621. 
He says, for where your treasure is. Now, I'm not saying this. I'm not making this up. This is Jesus himself saying, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. All right? And that's very important for you to know. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Whatever, if money is most important to you, whatever represents money or wealth or treasures to you, that's the most important thing. That That's what's going to be the priority in your life. There your heart will be also. So the future re reward, and we're wrapping up now, the future reward for, for a meek person, as we, as we uh, dealt with that, you remember, is the new earth, right? It will be a dazzling place and and, and and so forth and and you know we'll have all the things that we we desire and in the same way the future reward for those that are righteous is 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 not just a present relationship with God but a future home with God amen he says be ye righteous for I am righteous and and um, and so let, let's go on to this the third thing so the, sec the second one is to evaluate your finances. The third one is to evaluate your attitude toward people. Now, what am I saying about this? Hungering and thirsting after righteousness will also be revealed in how you treat others, in your attitude towards others, your attitude towards people that don't look like you, don't talk like you. If you're, if you're hungry and you're thirsty for righteousness, you will release every hurt and every offense and you refuse to harbor any bitterness, any resentment, any malice, any prejudice against anyone. And I know, you know, hearing this for many of you, you're like, oh my goodness, is this how far off I am from being what God wants me to be? But here's the good news, though. The good news is that, that here it is, we're, we're discussing it. We're, we're making ourselves aware of, of, of the areas in our lives that needs to be fixed. So let's evaluate how our attitude towards other people. People that hurt us, for example. People that despitefully used us. People that disappointed us, let us down. People that did stuff to us that, that never in a million years would you think that that person would ever, ever have done that to you, but they did. And they hurt you. And they maligned you. And they lied on you. For some of y'all, you, you were physically abused by people that you trusted the most. How do you reconcile that? How do you get around that? We have to. Start by changing our attitude towards those people. It's tough, but it can be done with God's help. And it's a part of being righteous. It's a part of being who God has called us to be. All right, here's, here's another question. This is the last question, y'all. To have the right attitude toward people, we've got to obey what command in Ephesians 4 verse 32. Look at what Ephesians 4 32 says. And be kind to one another. The right attitude, right? Tender hearted. The right attitude, right? Forgiving one another. No matter how much they hurt you. Just as God in Christ forgave you. You know, I usually tell tell this, uh, give this example of, um, you know, why it's important to treat each other um, w w well and, and treat each other with dignity and, and, and forgiveness. 
and gentleness, as the Bible puts it. Um, there's this, if, if let's say, for example, um, you know someone's child who is a wayward child, a child that just uh, does the wrong things. Really, um, let's say they they steal and they stole from you in the past, and you know, just a bad child. And then um, the child's father came to you one day and he said, you know what, I'm going to, how much do you owe on your house? I'm going to pay off your mortgage for you. I'm going to fix everything up. I'm going to make sure your house is paid off, your cars, your car notes are paid off. I'm going to make sure you're debt free. And you accept his gift. And he came true with his gift. Whatever he promised you, he did. And then one day, after all of that, you saw his son just hurt. Physically, maybe, let's say a car hit him. Or he's on drugs and, and you saw him at the street corner. Would you turn your back on that child? And say, well, you know what? Serve him right. He's, he's a bad child anyway. No, you're not. Maybe not for his sake. But for God's sake. For the, for the sake of the man who gave, who paid off your debt. You're going to look out for his child. You're going to take care of his child. Right? For the sake of that man. So it's the same thing with the people of God. God has been good to us. God has given us. We've, through him we've inherited eternal life. Through him. We've been. Our, our, our spiritual. Our sin debt. Has been paid in full. And even though. His children. And some of you is not perfect and are wayward sometimes. It doesn't mean that we're going to be nasty to each other. For the Father's sake, we're going to love one another. For the Father's sake, we're going to practice what Ephesians 4 verse 32 says, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. All right, that's all I have. So to find satisfaction, we've got to cultivate a good spiritual appetite. We've got to investigate the meaning of righteousness. And we've got to evaluate our lives. And the, all of that is extremely important if we're ever going to inherit or hunger and thirst after righteousness. All right, folks, uh, that's all I have for you. I hope you got something from this tonight. Uh, certainly, I thank God for everyone that joined in and everyone that participated. I, I certainly um, uh, enjoyed bringing it to you. And I, 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 you know, was hoping it, it's so hard to get questions answered because we're so far, you're so far behind on, on, on listening. You know, there's a delay in other words. And so, um, it, it, it uh, let me see if I can ask a question. Are there any, maybe they'll get it right away. Questions. Okay, um, but God bless you. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. And uh, next week we'll be back with another um, another part of this. Uh, there's just a, a couple of things I want to share with you. Those of you that are, are local and are in town, uh, the month of, of May is, is going to be a... Uh, 
what we call our Power Outreach Evangelism Month. And uh, for the entire month, every Sunday at 12.30 p.m. at Grace Temple, we'll have a very special service. It's going to be a prophetic deliverance service because service, we're going to have four dynamic preachers coming in. Uh, and we're going to have some uh, top of the line, top of the class musical guests coming in. And so it's going to be a great time uh, the month of May at Grace Temple. Uh, it, it's going to be a service geared towards uh, primarily the unsaved. So if you've got an unsaved aunt or uncle or cousin or brother, sister, uh, no matter who it is, friend, acquaintance, uh, bring them out. Bring them out on that Sunday night. On, on, on those Sundays, rather, at 12.30 p.m. Uh, for a Power Outreach Evangelism Month, all right? Um, your family member, your friend, your acquaintance could be uh, uh, saved during the course of that service cause, cause, or those services because that'll be our, our thrust, that'll be our focus. And, of course, we'll, it, it will be a deliverance service. We got a uh, prophetic word, um, from these uh, dynamic men of God, these dynamic preachers. So you don't want to miss this, all right, yourself. The month of May, very special month for us here at Grace Temple Church. So please join us every week for that month. We're going to have a very special guest speaker and a guest um, musical artist, all right? So uh, uh, be uh, bear that in mind. Also, uh, you know, this is... This is like our, our church service, um, our Bible study. Uh, we've got our members joining in. We got uh, the radio station folks joining in. Uh, God bless you all. And we got some other guests that I don't know and some that I do know. But we'd like to <clears throat> have you give something to this church, support this ministry. If, if this word and, and the other words have been a blessing to you, uh, running across the screen now, uh, it tells you three ways to give uh, online. Uh, you can go to onrealm.org slash gtc slash give. That's O-N-R-E-A-L-M onrealm.org forward slash gtc uh, forward slash give. And you can give right there safely, securely. Uh, also, if you have a cash app, uh, if you have a cash up account, you can go and just give to Grace Dollar. Grace, the word Grace, the word Dollar, Grace Dollar. And uh, you can give to us that way as well. All right. No amount is too small. Give. Uh, you can also give by texting as it's coming up on the screen there. You can see uh, you can use uh, your phone to text uh, and give that way as well. All right. But those are the ways we have to give. Uh, do something. Support this ministry. Support this work. And I, I know, there's no doubt in my mind that God will bless you for it. All right? Give to the glory of God. All right, folks. God bless you. That's all I have for you tonight. I certainly hope that you got something from this. I certainly hope that you were blessed by this. And um, tuning again next week. All right? And I noticed some of y'all uh, came on late, uh, but that's all right. Next week, um, we'll, we hopefully will get you on a little bit early, all right? I love y'all. God bless you. See y'all on Sunday. Thank you.